I was kind of tossing and turning uh, with this all day. Well, actually, last night, because I don't necessarily like to uh, preach occasions. But then, as I was laying there talking to the Lord about uh, about this, He says, "It's my birthday." All right.
should not be eating or touching the thing God said to not eat. But because it looked good. Whew, somebody come and say, everything that looked good ain't good for you. Here it is, this girl looked at what God said to not eat. And apparently it had to look good because if it didn't look good, she would not have purposely eaten what God told her not to eat. Right, yeah. But here the sad irony, here it was, Adam was standing right there. He was standing right there in the garden with his wife. But he was not taking honor of his headship. All right, right. Listen, to, 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 to all the brothers. It's a bad commentary. When you are the man of the house, but won't stand in the position of a man. If you are the man of your house, you ought to take responsibility for what goes on in your house. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that your wife can say a thing. And if you cancel it, it's canceled. Somebody say, this is the Bible. Because God honors your word as one being head and being uh, of authority in that household. So even if she says something in error and messes up, you can override what she says. And God will honor your word. But the Bible says that after Eve had ate the fruit, I'm sure Adam probably was standing back saying, well, God said you're you going to die. So I'm going to wait and see. Now, if that was me, now, 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 if, if, if Lady Carol was going to drink some poison, and I knew it was poisonous, if I saw her get ready to chug it down, I'm going to slap it out of her hand hard I can. But the Bible said Adam waited until she ate. And then after she bit the fruit, she turned and gave to him. And the Bible said he ate. And once he ate, sin came into the world. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that has never caught off God. Huh, somebody said he's never caught off God. The Bible says that Jesus was the lamb, watch this now, that was slain before the foundation of the world. But understand, God could not get him here in his full deity. God had to get him here in a way where the devil couldn't kill him. Yet he was, had purposed himself to die. Can you imagine, here it is in heaven, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And even before the foundation of the world, when God knew his, the man he was going to make was going to mess up. Jesus said, I know the man is going to mess up, but because I love him so much, I'll volunteer. When the last time you volunteered to die for anybody? Before they messed up. But because he knew that man was going to mess up, don't mean, the Bible said, or the, or the clarence, he had already made a decision that before I make the man, I'm going to volunteer to die. Right. But God couldn't just appear as God, because had he appeared as God and took over, he would have violated his own will. Right. He would have violated the order that he had set forth in the earth. So God then had to come through a woman, but not have a son who was born of a man. Amen. Somebody said that don't make sense. Because in our physiology, that does not make sense that a, a woman can have a baby without the assistance of a man. You say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. We can get one who's been artificially inseminated. You still need some, some man. With your smart self. Because if the man don't give you a seed, get here all the eggs you want. You may have a time anyway, I'm going to And so here it is, God needed a few things to get this thing done properly. First of all, God needed a voice in the earth that would prophesy the coming of Jesus. Now the first voice was his. In Genesis chapter 3, he told the serpent, he said,
says, my seed will bruise your head. You will bruise his heel, but I will, but he will bruise your head. Somebody said, that's the first voice. But then there was another voice that was spoken in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Look here in verse number six. Are you there, class? He says, Isaiah, now, now understand, Isaiah is generally called the eagle, or it's called the eagle eye prophet. If you read the book of Isaiah, if you're familiar with Isaiah, Isaiah only has 66 books. Now, in your Bible, there are only 66 books. In Isaiah, there are 66 chapters. Isaiah is generally called the little Bible in the Bible. Here it is, the eagle eye prophet looked down hundreds of years early and made a declaration in the earth of this Jesus who would come to be. He says, unto you, a child is born. Unto, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Notice here what he says. He said, unto us a child. Which means that Jesus wasn't going to come in his full glory. He was going to come as a baby. But then he says, unto us a son is given. He is not identifying God's humanity and God's deity. Come on, class, say humanity. Deity. He's coming as a baby. But in his humanity, he is just the most God. He's the son of the living God. Watch this. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. He's saying, this, can't nobody handle what's coming but him. Oh, that means, hey, listen, whatever happens in your life, Jesus got some great big shoulders to handle. And curse somebody and say, he can handle it, he can handle it. Now watch this. And his name. We can shout right here. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Now, I know you heard one of the comments, but read, read the verse. There's a comment right there. That means wonderful is one name. Now, yes, he's a wonderful counselor, but he's wonderful. Woo, somebody say he's wonderful. Understand, when you read this, the scripture over in the gospel, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Bible said that Jesus did some great and wonderful miracles. Simply saying this, but anytime God does something great in your life, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, somebody say, it's a wonderful thing. For the next time something comes up in your life that something good happens in your life, say, oh, that came from Mr. Wonderful. I know somebody, I, you kind of find Mr. Right and Mr. Good Boy and Mr. Wonderful, but if you want to really find Mr. Wonderful, find Jesus. someone who can really, really rock your world. Find Mr. Wonderful. How somebody said, that's Mr. Wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. But not just Wonderful, his name shall be called Counselor. Pastor, what do I need a counselor for? A counselor is when I need some advice. Anybody tell me ever need some, some good advice? I don't mean some of this jacked up advice. Here it is, you broke and want to tell me how to spend some money. Come on, you working on one of your tenth marriage and want to give me marriage counsel. The only thing you can give me is tell me what to not do. Here it is, he's a counselor. Now understand, you recall when he was 12 years of age? The Bible said that his parents were down and they were in a synagogue and when he was 12 years old, Charlotte, check, check this out. He was 12 years old and his mother and father, they left him yes. in the temple. They were a couple of days out before they realized they didn't have Jesus. Sean, how in the world do you lose Jesus? 
She said, Poppy, look at my Christmas tree. I said, baby, good. Can I put it on my tree? She said, yes, Poppy. So I put her Christmas tree on my tree. Because to me, that's valuable. Now, you may trash it, but to me, it's valuable. And that's her first tree she gave to me. Here it is. God gave Mary my baby. And the gift got left behind. I wonder how many of us are like Mary. We have left the gift someplace else. How many of us during this Christmas season we have spent so much time uh, battling over who we're going to buy gifts for, who we're not going to buy gifts for. We've got frustrated, aggravated, and upset because our money funny and change is strange. But my question is, if all you're running around, where did you leave the gift? I don't mean the gift you bought at Kmart or Target. I mean, but the gift that God gave you, where did you leave the gift? I asked the person, I said, where did you leave the gift? Where did you leave the gift? Here it is, they're a few days away, and they left Jesus in the temple. Here it is, by the time they realized he was not there, they had to go back and find Jesus. Here it was, he was in the temple, giving the the Pharisees and Sadducees some counsel. Here it was, the word, giving the word. Y'all ain't going to me. Here it was, the word himself. The word that became flesh. The word that dwelt among men. The word that was there in the beginning. God said, let there be. He spoke and it showed up. Here it was, the word called the stars to be a star showed up. The word that said, let there be light, light in me be. And light showed up. The word was in the temple giving the word. Can you imagine all of those folks sharing who were in the temple who thought they were smart? They were close to tell the 12 year old boy and show them or something. You know how we do every now and then. We want to show folks how smart we are. We want to give them Greek, a little Greek, a little Hebrew, a little Aramaic. Then you said, let me chip you out a little bit. I'll tell you what this really means. And the Bible said he was in the temple. And they were astonished. How this 12 year old boy had so much wisdom. Well, Isaiah had always said, his name shall be called. Wonderful. And counselor. But somebody said, not only that. Keep reading, keep reading. Thank you, Will. He said, but he also shall be called the mighty God. Now, Pastor, how can he describe who he has been the mighty God? Well, over in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, there's a story here about a woman who had an issue of blood who had apparently read the book of Ezekiel, that the way to identify the Messiah was that the Messiah would come doing great miracles. They said that the Messiah would be clothed with what's called, we call a talith. But at the end of his garment, what we call tassels, the Bible called those tassels, called them wings. And so Ezekiel said that at the end of the Messiah's role, he said that there'll be healing in his wings. Come on, that's a healing in his wings. So here it is, a woman who had an issue, who couldn't be outside in public. Here it is, a woman who was, had an issue, was, was isolated from her family, her, her children. She was all by herself, had spent all her, all her money, and she was flat broke. Somebody say flat broke. She was upset because every doctor she had been to had took her money. Now her life was turned upside down. Here she heard about Jesus. This man who was doing miracles. This man who could, who was, who could stop a funeral and raise up someone who was dead. Here is this man who, had, who, who was getting ready to go to Jairus' house and raise up baby girl from a dead. Here was a man who could go feed 5,000 men plus their babies and their wives and with a two-piece dark fish.
this wish. She heard that this man, she said, and in her mind, she said, he must be the mighty God. He must be the Messiah. And the Bible said that she said, if I can but touch his wings, the finished part of him, if I touch him, I shall be made whole. And when she touched his him, the mighty God that was full of virtue. The mighty God that was filled with power. The mighty God that was full of the anointing. The mighty God who was the Messiah. When she touched him, there was a transference from here to her. And she was whole. And so when she, when Jesus asked, who touched me? The Bible said she ducked, tried to hide. Because she understood that I'm in the presence of the mighty God. So Isaiah said, his name shall be called. Wonderful. He shall be called. Counselor. He shall be called. The mighty God. But not just that. He shall be called the everlasting Father. I'm going to say everlasting Father. And no matter how bad life gets, my daddy ain't going nowhere. No matter what the devil does, God will always be there. One writer said, he's a present help in a time of trouble. Which simply tells me that trouble is my indication that God is there. So you're crying over the trouble because you feel like God has left you. I somebody say, he's there, he's there, he's there. Trouble is your indication that no matter how much hell you're going through, God is right there with you to help you go through it. How somebody said, go through it, go through it, go through it. See him, I, I challenge y'all, some of us, when we go through hell, we, we, we build a tent, we build a house, we build a skyscraper in the middle of hell. The Bible, David said, yea, though I walk through it. He said, I may be here now, but I'm not here to stay. Good God of mine. She must said, I'm not here to stay. See, the devil thinks he has you down for the count. He thinks he has you out for the count. But he forgot that I'm, I have the wonderful counselor, the mighty God.
Same for the last 30 years, all of a sudden, my money is gone. Sometimes things just happen. And the enemy wants you to get depressed. Just like the disciples in the storm. But here it is. Jesus, you all, was in the boat. Bible said he was asleep on a pillow. How somebody tell me, say, you can rest in the middle of trouble. Come on, you didn't see it. Come on, look in my face. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Look in my eye and say, I command you to rest while you're in the storm. That's for somebody. Because it is not that you won't be in the storm. The problem is, you are trying to fight the water and then are resting in the water. Pastor, give me something else. Okay, I'm going to go real deep right here. Come on, say, Pastor, go real deep right here. Watch this. I'm going to go real deep right here. Did you know that technically, if you were in water over your head, you couldn't drown? And so 
scam. What's really happening is your body is telling yourself, I got to cover you. I got to cover you. Because here is an open wound. And if I don't, if, if I don't cover you, there'll be some infection. See, some of y'all are getting infection in your life because you let the Holy Spirit cover you. Some of y'all become toxic because you won't let God cover you. You are still dealing with last year's garbage because you won't let God cover you. But somebody said, Lord, cover me. You still haven't forgiven yourself for the dumb, dumb thing you've done. But say, God, cover me. And that scam will cover you. It'll cover that spot. And it'll stay there until that spot is totally healed or you plug it off. Now watch this. The problem with plugging off a scam is that you reopen the wound. And the reason some of y'all can't get healed is because you keep Hustle man said, leave the scam alone, leave the scam alone. Listen, John God, I don't care what you've done. I don't care who did it with or did it to you. Once you repent, that's all God has asked you to do. I don't know how come we want to hold folks to a higher level than God. If God said to repent, that's all a person can do. Okay, I'm going to go here now and let me sermon. I don't care how much they offended you. All they can do is ask for forgiveness. Why do you want blood, sweat, and tears when God said, forgive them? How somebody say, you got to forgive, baby. You got to forgive. No one said you wouldn't get hurt. No one said you wouldn't get wounded. But if you, watch this, if you don't forgive, watch this, tweet this. You will hold yourself hostage. And I, Daniel, I like me too much to hold me hostage. I like being free. That's the reason I don't do nothing to go to jail. Because I like being free. I am. And so watch this. Here it is. God had to get a baby in the earth. Now, the devil thought it was going to be Moses. So the devil had Moses he thought he would kill Moses in the river. But God had Moses' mother put the boy in a basket where the crocodile and alligators were. And God began to supernaturally have that boy swim up the Nile so the devil couldn't destroy him. And the devil said, okay, I'm going to kill him anyway. I'm going to have them kill all the babies under two. The problem was God put Moses in the house of the Pharaoh. And while all the other boys were getting killed, Moses was still living. But then when Moses got kicked out, they said, oh, I got him now. Put him out there in the wilderness, and God said, God, Pharaoh, God told Pharaoh, I'm going to kill all the firstborn. Well, that was Moses too. The firstborn in his house. But God says, if you speak of the blood, over the doorposts. When the deaf angels see the blood, he'll. Then we have the first day of Pentecost. The day of Passover. The problem was, y'all, Moses died. Because Moses got mad with church folk. And so, yes, God gave the boy come, but Moses didn't, didn't see it, so Moses couldn't be a deliverer. Joseph. The 
somebody pray. Now here's the funny, because now the fourth voice was this. Come on, can I say fourth voice? The fourth, the fourth voice was this. She said, she said, bitch, unto me. According to that word. So she came in line with the voice of the angel. But then watch this. Here it is. She goes on a three-day, I'm sorry, a, a, a three-month vacation. Watch this. What is she? She leaves her place of dwelling, not pregnant. She leaves Joseph. She's not pregnant. For three months, she goes away. But when she comes back, she tells Joseph, I'm pregnant. Now, you know, and all the men can say maybe this, you know and I know. If your girl leaves you for three months and she ain't, and she wasn't pregnant, but comes back and says she's pregnant, we got a problem. All, all the men should have said amen. I know some of y'all are Joseph Jr. I'm not. We got a problem. Because during this three-month period, God wanted to show her that, you, that, that I'm really living on the inside of you. Yes. And so what God does, if, if God go impregnate this, have this other old woman to get pregnant. Oh, yes. Now she's way beyond bear, childbearing years. Yes. You find this in Luke, the first part of Luke chapter 1. Oh, yes. Old chick, old, I mean she old. Way past childbearing days. Zachariah, this boy all dried up. The, 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 he dried He's dry. He's got the cactus in the in in desert. <laughs> now, at first, Pastor, he's praying for a child. Yes. He wants a son. But now, time has gone by. He's not got the son. In his heart, he wants a son. But he knows now he's too old to get a son. But isn't it amazing that no matter how old you get, God can give you what you believe in for? <laughs> And so here is now, both of them y'all all real dried up, and God was this. God gave him a desire to hang out with Liz one more time. Woo, somebody said one more time. I tell you, well, God got jokes, don't he? God let him hang out one more time. And this, this is <laughs> Help me, Jesus. One more time. He's on the hood, turn up the lights. And light a candle. Yeah. One more time, he sung, let me hold you tight. Yeah. If only for one night. Yeah. One more time. Say, yeah. come on, girl, because I'm begging and loving. Yeah. He said, what was dead is moving right now in the city of my soul. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Here it is, he hooks up with Liz. <laughs> and God tells him, say, no, she's pregnant, boy. What you gonna call it? He said, What? <laughs> Pregnant now? You don't have it ever once in so long until when you got it, but you're too old to keep it. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Oh, 
she going, well, girl, what happened to you? <laughs> How this happened? But watch this. She begins to tell Elizabeth what the angel told her. And by the time they begin to engage in salutations, Jesus fills John with the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't got it yet. Y'all catch this. Nowhere in Scripture have you, have you read where an unborn child who was still in the womb got full of the Holy Ghost? But the Holy Ghost in Jesus, as she embraced Elizabeth, jumped over Elizabeth and got off and jumped. And John began to leap and speak in tongues. He was in the womb of his mouth.
the sacrificial lamb for you and I. Was born in the same barn where the animals who were to be sacrificed. He was born with the sacrifice. Are you here? And here it is. Jesus, oh, I can imagine, was there. Bible says, in the state. And here it is, the light of the world was born. Jesus bypassed the laws of physics. He bypassed how we thought he should have got here. They came looking for the Savior to come in on a white horse. But he came in through a virgin woman. He came in, y'all, incognito. Well, you have thought he was born in a, watch this, technically, he was born in a palace. Just at the time, it wasn't called a palace. Okay? At one point, this building we're here in right now was once a bakery. But it's not now. But those who know the area can tell you, in the 70s, it was a bakery. You were here. Well, it was, right? A bakery. The palace where David used to live in was no more palace. It was now a hotel. But it was built to be a palace. But God had the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords born in a palace. Watch this. That was hid on the cover of the enemy so he couldn't see the Prince of Peace when he was born. But see, the devil still trying to kill him. If you read the Bible, the Bible says that Joseph had to take Jesus and Mary away to hide them out. But listen, when you are when you are a superstar, you can't hide a superstar for a long time. Jesus the Christ who is the superstar, was exposed with a star. They identified where he was. And the king said, go and kill all the boys two years and down. He was the wise men. They were looking for our savior. Y'all took them two years to find him. But what's what happened though? Two years of searching, they finally came to where he was. Bible said they laid gold, frankincense, and myrrh at his feet. Now watch this. Each shepherd, the shepherd and their herds, it was told that they each shepherd had at least 130 herdsmen with them, with camels or donkeys to carry the gold. Now watch this. When folk tell you that Jesus was poor, he was not. If each if each one had 130 camels or horses carrying what they brought to him. Let's count it up. There's 390 donkeys, camels, bringing either gold, frankincense, or murder. Now, when was the last time somebody brought you 130 bags of gold? Jesus wasn't broke. But the reason they said he was made poor because compared to where he came from, 130, it could be 10 billion bags and it still didn't measure up to what he left in gold. Because he had to be God. He yet had to act. 
rectified with our pain. So the word says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He said, you say, God, I'm hurting. He said, oh, I, I know what hurt feels like. Same of him before me. You'll be a sinner on you. 
celebrate you. We honor your day, your birthday. The day set aside once a year that all of us, even God, those who don't like you, 